that's a thing. Okay, let's start with a basic introduction to chess to make it easier for you to understand the rest or to simply refresh your memory. A chessboard consists of 64 square spaces. There are files, which are the columns going up and down, pointing at you and your opponent, and marked from A to H. And then there are ranks, the horizontal rows from 1 to 8. Each of the 64 spaces is identified by the combination of a letter of the file and a number of the rank. The player with the white pieces goes first. Each chess piece has a name and specific move capabilities. Don't forget to position the board correctly before playing. Each player should have a dark square in their lower left corner. Now, the first piece we're going to discuss is the rook. It's placed at the corners of the board, which are A1 and H1 for one player, and A8 and H8 for the other. The best thing about rooks is that they can move any number of vacant squares, both vertically and horizontally. If your opponent's piece blocks either of your paths, move the rook to the occupied square, and there you go! Another player's piece will be long gone. But remember one important thing. Rooks can't jump over pieces. <laughs> That's checkers. If one of your pieces is between your rook and your opponent's piece, this move is not going to work. Next, we'll take a closer look at the horse or knight. Knights are placed on squares B1 and G1 for one player, and B8 and G8 for the other. Unlike rooks, knights can jump over other pieces, and they're actually the only piece that can do that. They move in an L-shaped pattern, two squares horizontally and one vertically, or one horizontally and two vertically. Keep in mind that knights can capture a piece only when they land on that piece. I'm not afraid.